<laughs> I, I liked it because it's uh, there's not many places you can be this close to nature. I mean, there's it's not very uncommon to see a black bear in your yard. Mm -hmm. And what do you like most about Kitwanga? Um. Well, what is it? Um, just the mountains, and I don't know. It's quiet, peaceful. Well, it's nice population. The totem poles are sightseeing the mountains, the rivers. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite part about living in Kyoga? You can climb up a snake hill. When you get here and you open your car, it smells good. And you get in the city and you open your car door and it stinks. And that's just the way it is, right? So it's true. What I like best about Kimwaga is it's, it's my idea of uh, a place where there's still freedom. Having fun? Yes. What kind of fun things are you doing, Kimwaga? Playing soccer. Yeah. Snake Hill. Scenery, family, friends. Love, life, kids. <laughs> Do you like living in Kitwanga? Yes. Yeah. What's your favorite part about living in Kitwanga? Soccer. Soccer? Mm -hmm. A nice quiet place. Get to enjoy the scenery. Lots of talking to people. Parting words. <laughs> Is there anything you like to do? In, what's your favorite things to do in Kitwanga? Hmm. Fishing, yeah. Fishing. I love the scenery. I love the weather. I love each season. I love the people. I love being close to the Sina River. I love a lot about our town. It's a good place to raise your family. Good. Because you know everybody. Everybody knows you. There's no, you know, no secrets. Yeah, so, pretty much. Yeah, literally, yeah. no secrets. <laughs> Everybody knows your business. <laughs> yep. The view of the, the view of the mountains. The view of the mountains? Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. knowing where you belong and having roots and something to fall back on. Whenever you need to just re-energize or leave the world behind for a bit, you can come home and everything is still pretty much the way it is when you left. Things really changed. Oh, we got the Chinook King Salmon. It's a spring. Then we got Coho's. They're they're not as big as the spring, but. They taste just as good. We got sockeye. They're in abundance. Lots of pinks. Humpies? Well, lots of them. Stink too. And dog salmon. Chum.
Fresh strawberries and raspberries, not store bought. Yeah. Soap berries. <laughs> Soap berries. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, Indian ice cream. Mm. Do you guys go picking for berries? Yep. Yep. Yeah. There's, you could pick raspberries, soap berries, strawberries on the ground. Fish. Fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, spring salmon and sockeye. Yeah, fish. Mm. Living off of uh, salmon, moose meat, deer meat, and I grow a lot of my own vegetables. Potatoes, corn, tomatoes. Broccoli, cabbage, lettuce. What's your guys' favorite food to eat? Traditional Chinese food. food. No, traditional like native Indian food. Uh, fish. Fish. Uh, moose meat. Moose meat. Moose meat. Mm. Soap berries I love. That stuff I can just sick over that stuff. It's so good. <laughs> because it's so it's you know, it's it's an organic berry and you know it has it serves a lot of medicinal purposes. Like I know they use it to help rheumatoid arthritis and arthritis and pains in your joints and yeah, if you just people um mix it up, some people don't add sugar to get the the main medicinal part of it, or people add sugar for like a a fun taste, you know. So there's and some people don't even whip it up, they just dip their spoon in and eat the soap berry juice from it. Mm, half dry. Half dry? Yes. Mm. Mm. Smoked. I like my scallops, um, <laughs> my clams, stuff like that. But I don't know why I don't care about crab and lobster, but anything else I can eat. <laughs> I haven't seen abalone for years. Mm. I know, I keep seeing it on Dolly's fish market. <laughs> 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 the commercial. I want some abalone. <laughs> Or fish. I like moose meat. <laughs> moose meat? Moose meat's good. What's your favorite traditional food when you come here to eat with your grandparents? Spaghetti. Spaghetti? I love bannock and I love mm -hmm. fried seaweed. Teach my kids how to hunt and they're scared and but uh, the fishing part I like the most because it's fun being in a smokehouse. <laughs> and doing the fish and taking them off and mm -hmm. that's a lot of work but it's worth it, uh, likelihood anyway. I was taught at a very young age how important it was to make sure you had fish even though you didn't like it or you got tired of it but when the winter when you didn't have the money what did you have to turn to is the fish that you preserved, you know your berries, soap berries. I like soap berries now like I as a child, I really loved it because it was Indian ice cream, eh? Mm -hmm. And then I got tired of it because that was our only treats when we were younger. But now I'm using it for my arthritis and to clean up my digestive system. So I use it, to, I make it like tea, like iced tea. Um, do you guys go fishing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How do you guys catch the fish? Uh, with a <laughs> net. <laughs> with a net or a rod. Oh, okay. What's being yeah. fishing? No passing way. What's the grossest part about uh, gutting a fish or a moose or something? Keeping the guts out. Yeah, oh, yeah. Carrying it. And you really save on the electricity because once it gets it hot and high, you turn it down. Once it gets up to that temperature, you turn it down to about five. Oh! And it'll stay that temperature at 240 degrees or more.
show what are we doing, Anna? We're uh, gonna make a food offering to our elders and our ancestors that have passed on, and to the Creator for allowing us to harvest fish and use the smokehouse. Since we're doing fish, we have to follow the the fish laws. While well, you guys came through the totem poles, there. there's one lane on the ground there that uh, that tells us belongs to the eagles. But the guy that's on that totem pole, they call him Sayengo Manbao, which means that when they were having fish late in the spring and there was little mold on the fish, and he wouldn't eat it. So that spring. Summer, the fish came and took him away. When he came back, he told us, he told everybody how the fish laws of the fish are. That when you clean fish, everything that belongs to the fish that you don't use, you go back into the river. I go. The stronghold, it was access to the river, traveling route, fish, hunting. So it was just pretty much mainly the best place to be, hot spot. Spot. We have like the Kilinga River, yeah. we have the Skeena River, and then the Grish Trail. It's like a central area. Only they want to them all I know the story of all the kids are making fun those days. That creek up here. The creek up there? Yeah. Oh yeah. They put stick on the humpy's back. Long stick. They light it. Fire huh. looks pretty good at night for them. And uh, the, the fish, the nature of things, takes them all. Nothing left. Yeah. All those kids to do all missing. On the north side of Kipping Pool Lake is where they had all the is where they had fire pits and food pits that they would dig out. And that's how they stored their food, as they buried it. How they did it years ago, and they, they cut holes in the ground, and um, we stuck our meat down there. And uh, when the white men came into the, the lives around the natives, around this area, they had uh, bologna. It was green, but they still cut the top part. They cut the green part off, but they still ate it. Look at this. Blaze mark. Yeah. And if you're trying to figure out where the trail went, you would just have to stand here and take a look around. And it would be somewhere you could see, you'd see the next blaze mark, and you know that's the direction the trail goes in. Totem pole used to be right along the river. The river was high, coming up high. So they moved way up where it is now facing the other way, which should face down the river. I became fascinated with the totem poles because I was a little bit scared of them as a child. But uh, after studying them, I wanted to learn more about them and how to 
how to make them. And where'd you learn your language from? Or who? My dad, my mom, all my relatives. That's my first language. I didn't know any English to begin with. When I was younger, my parents never really taught, uh, talked English to me. They always talk in the language to me, and that was the way I was able to uh, learn the language. Luangkwadi <laughs> means my heart's happy. So I like saying that on my really good days. It's map. <laughs> da. Remuch. Live to the fullest, have fun each day. Never know what's coming around the next day. But yeah, hopefully all you kids out there will actually finish your schooling, get your education and go to university. It's the only way you're gonna get these days. We have to get off the games, iPods, whatever, and learn. Otherwise, they won't have this to fall back on when they're growing up. When we're just kids, they tell us that everything's got a spirit and we've got to respect it. Even the plants, the animals, each other's. And how do you know you've got a spirit? They say only the power of the sun will show your spirit, which is your shadow. They call it shadow now, but that's your spirit. It follows around wherever you go. Okay. And what, what are you guys going to do when you get older? Uh, we might move to Paris. I'm moving to Vancouver. Moving to Vancouver. Cool. What do you guys want to do when you... Sorry. What do you guys want to do when you... Photograph it! I don't know. Well, I'm probably going to Paris. Oh, Olympic player! Awesome. Oh, um, oh, that. Do in like five to ten years. Oh, become a chef. Policeman. Policeman? Sweet, chef. Yeah, Hey Diana, Hi. do you like being home in Kiwanga? Yes, I do. Yeah? What's your favorite part about being home? Are you seriously recording? No, I'm not. I'm going to either be a veterinarian, a baker, a cooker, a traveler, a homemaker, a designer, a just maker. You can do it all, too. And when you get into a city for the young kids, it's they've got to get lots of support from their, the rest of their families or they're not going to make it. To me, it's, they can't cope in the white world because we're um, subjected to living on a reserve, which is where there's nothing. Get everybody to outside and outdoors instead of inside smoking weed, getting drunk all the time. What about you, Morgan? I'd like to be a photographer. Join sports, stay in school, <laughs> stay off drugs and alcohol. What are your hopes? What are your hopes or dreams? Um, probably join the military, but graduate high school. Learn what you can about your culture because we are currently we're dying down. Know how to speak clearly. 
look at people in the eye when they talk. Um, be proud of who they are, what they are, and where they came from. To be proud of their dances and their songs because that's where where our stories are from. That's our history. You know, whenever we re-dance it, we're reenacting that moment and how our ancestors thought of that beautiful song to go along with each tribe and you know it tells a story same with and it all relates to the totem poles as well so if we just i would like to see an indian dancing group keep on going to school uh, keep on loving yourself caring for yourself and others will care for you keep separate the older one from the younger ones mm -hmm. then you have a different generation coming up anything else you guys want to say to the camera Hey! So